The digital revolution and the explosion of social media has created an entirely new job in fashion, the influencer. Who are they, where do they come from and what do they do? They're not journalists, more like advisors, with less of a critical attitude than the mainstream media, although they do exist in parallel. Brands are enthralled to them, allocating a large part of the advertising budget to influencers. Steve's Onkpunu has more than 117,000 followers on Instagram and a unique story. I'm black, I'm an immigrant, I'm the child of immigrants, I'm disabled. Steve's destiny was forged by broken dreams in childhood. I was born in Benin into a family of nine children. I was the youngest. I used to take my sister's dolls and dress them up. I took off their dolls' clothes and made them new ones. But I also had a talent. I was really very good at playing football. And I was spotted by an agent, which is how I came to live in France when I was 14. I came originally to try out, and I did really well on the day of the trials, but I got injured. And that was when they diagnosed me with a disease called HLA B27. Steve's has ankylosing spondylitis. His hips and legs are affected by this acute rheumatic condition. After two years in bed, he was treated by the same surgeon as footballer Ronaldo. I was lucky enough to have a very strong, close family, an African family. I was really hopeful because my father would always say to me, in fact, you have eight older brothers and sisters and they can walk and don't have any health issues. So in my head, I could do it too. My dad works in the oil industry. Well, he doesn't anymore, he's retired. He was involved in politics in Benin. In fact, my father is a great inspiration for me. My grandfather was a fisherman, and my dad started off with no money whatsoever. He walked for two or three days to get to the capital, Cotonou, from Bopa in the south of the country. And my mother was a seamstress, then she sold rice in the market. Now my mom's in the fabric import-export business. She sells wax fabric in Benin. And she's also a Nana Benz, a nickname for the powerful women who drive a Mercedes thanks to the fortunes they've built up importing and exporting wax fabrics. Steve's also a designer, and he's showing off his line of t-shirts at AKAA, Paris's annual African art and design fair. After the surgery that allowed him to walk again, Steve's finished high school, studied business, got a degree from Cambridge, and a master's in luxury brand marketing, all with help and support from his parents. I did internships at luxury brands, like Gucci, for example. I was lucky enough to do a six-month internship at Saint Laurent, and I've worked at Cartier and at Burberry. One day I got this lucky break and got a job at Coach. They were five fantastic years because gradually I worked my way up in the company. At Coach I went from being a supervisor to being commercial director, so it was a great experience. But a couple of important things interrupted Steve's career at the New York leather goods brand Coach. The first was Instagram, as he started posting photos of architecture. The second, a very special hat that Steve's fell in love with and now rarely takes off. Even though I was able to walk, I was totally absorbed by my work. And I was really lacking in self-confidence, I was very shy. Once I went out and a young woman was looking at me, and she gave me a wink. It was the first time that it ever happened, so I was a bit thrown off by it. I laughed it off. And it was good because it was my hat that had caught her eye, not my lower body, because I do limp from time to time because of this disease I have. Anyway, one day I was looking for something in my bag, and my friend took a photo of the scene. So he takes a photo of me like that with my head down. At the time, I usually got about 30, 40 likes on Instagram. And the photo started to buzz on my social media. Everyone was sharing it, liking it, leaving comments. So the next day, I posted a photo of myself, but this time without a hat on. It was a total flop. No one on social media was interested. So I thought, OK, I'll try again with the hats. And that's what I did, and it worked. So in the end, I said, well, there you go. There's something special about that hat. Once Steve's had more than 10,000 followers, Brands started to get in touch, asking him to promote their products. At the same time, he was finishing off his line of t-shirts and bags, while also launching a range of high-end pieces made from offcuts of wax fabrics. This clutch, for example, it's really me. It's a mix between the Benin me and the France me. It's a mix between Africa and the West, and it's all made in Paris, entirely made by hand. It's all produced in this modest Parisian workshop. Pattern cutting, assemblage and the embroidery of cheeky slogans like this one, which says child of immigrants. It's made in France, here in the centre of Paris. 
We make it locally so we're close to the process. We can stop by and have a chat about production, we're in charge. We absolutely do not want it to be made in China. Maybe made in Europe, why not? But not in China, no. We have the savoir-faire, the skills and the expertise here in France, and it would be a shame not to use that. His role as an influencer has allowed Steves to develop a consultancy, providing private coaching for brands and individuals. He says he can boost self-confidence by working through negative experiences. Personally, I must say that I've experienced racism in a number of companies. It's true that in the last company I was working in, at one point I wasn't able to progress much further in my career. Because I heard someone from Human Resources say, oh, we're not going to put a black person at the head of the European sector in a fashion house. So yeah, I was in the corridor, I was walking past and I heard that. I said, I'm here, I heard that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm thankful to her today because if I hadn't heard that, I wouldn't have been able to achieve all this. Turning negatives into positives with critical distance and a healthy sense of humor, Steve's Ukbunu balances the role of successful businessman and chatty influencer with brio.